Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Dr. Ghost Games. If you all are new to the channel, welcome. I'm Dr. Ghost, and I make content for the game World of Warships Legends. Today, we are going to be doing a tips slash guide on destroyers in 2023. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have saw my carrier's guides in 2022 and in 2023 and uh you know what i'm gonna go ahead and expand on that little bit there so today's video we're just gonna be covering destroyers okay we're gonna go over a lot of destroyers how to play them at least in my opinion at least how i play them and we're going to go over what you should be doing as a destroyer. And we're also going to... I'm going to show off some uh, some destroyers that are pretty good to pick up if you guys are interested. So, right off the rip, uh, we are in the American line, okay? If we go take a look at the tech trees, um, the American destroyers, alright? These are more gunboats. These are more of the kind of anti-destroyer kind of destroyers, okay? These things are meant to get right up in there and counter other destroyers however they can also um successfully daka daka and burn down battleships as well so these are very good gunboats starting at farragut going all the way up to sumner all of these are great great gunboats and um i i absolutely love my american destroyers um they are freaking awesome and uh, i have nothing but good to say about the american destroyers but they're gunboats okay so keep that in mind they're they, they can torpedo but they're not the best at it compared to for example the japanese destroyers the japanese destroyers the top line here um right up here this is the torpedo boat line okay these are all torpedo boats the Japanese destroyers lack in the firepower department, okay? They, they are not very good gunboats, so what they do have, however, is some of the hardest hitting torpedoes in the entire game, okay? And they have some of the best concealment in the game. So if you are the kind of player that likes to go around and stealth torpedo, this line is definitely for you. I have tried this line out. I'm not a big fan. The second line here, this is also kind of a torpedo line, um... Minikaze, Hatsuharu, Shiryatsuyu. It's a bit of a um, like a hybrid kind of line here. At least these three here, these are torpedo DDs, okay? You want to be playing these primarily as a torpedo destroyer role. However, once you get to the Akazuki and once you get to the Kitakaze, these two destroyers here at the end are phenomenal gunboats. These are great, great, great gunboats. And uh, if you are wanting another uh, decent little gunboat line, this line right here is a pretty good line to go down once you get to the Akazuki and once you get to the Kitakaze. Moving on to the British Destroyers. The British Destroyers are kind of like, in my experience, they're kind of like an all-around sort of destroyer. They're pretty good at torping. They're pretty good at gunboating. They have sonar once you get to Tier 5, which is something pretty unique on a destroyer. But yeah, the British have access to sonar, and they also have something called... Um, short they've got short generating uh or they got short duration smokes you get a bunch of smoke screens however you can just rapidly pop these things over and over and over again they last only like 40 50 seconds but the reload time is pretty good as well it's around the same 40 50 seconds so you can keep on popping these smoke screens and you and utilizing them to your advantage also, one thing to point out, too, with the American Destroyers, the American Destroyers, they are gunboats, but they also have the best smoke screens in the game. They last the longest, and uh, you can disperse them the longest. So, American smoke screens are some of the best smoke screens in the game. But moving back over to the British, this line here, it's a bit more tricky, but I think it's a line, it's kind of like an all-around sort of line. They've got good torpedoes, they've got good guns, they've got decent smokes, um, obviously, you can keep on popping them over and over and over again because you get so many of them. They're short-duration smokes. And they also have sonar once you get to Tier 5. So it's kind of like a good all-around sort of jack-of-all-trades destroyer line here. Moving on to the Germans, they're kind of the same way. The Germans have um, something called Hydro, okay? So once you get to Tier 5, the Germans have that beautiful German Hydro. Uh... The guide obviously doesn't have it right now, but once you get the hull upgrade on, you will be able to get the uh, the Hydro. And the Hydro on the Germans is some of the best in the game. So that really, really, really strong German Hydro, and when you mix that with your German guns, you got decent torpedoes, you got decent smokes. 
you got a lot of HP. These are very good anti-destroyer uh, destroyers as well. And they're also pretty good at torpedoing. They're also pretty good at gunfighting. So they're kind of like an all-around sort of uh, destroyer here. Um, but they are more along the lines of sort of sonar smoke comboing. Con the British can't really do that very well because their sonar is not very long range. But the Germans here, they're very good at like basically um, popping their smoke screens and popping that long range sonar, four or five kilometers. So there you go. The Germans, I'm not a big fan of them, but... They are there, and they are pretty good at kind of doing a lot of things at once. Once again, this is kind of a jack-of-all-trades sort of line here. Moving on to the French. I don't have a whole lot of experience with the French, but in my experience, keep in mind the French destroyers, they do not get access to smoke screens. But what they do have is pretty decent guns. Most of them have around 130 millimeter guns. They're not the most rapid firing in the world, but they do have main battery reload boosters. If we go and take a look at the Gepard, for example, as you guys can see here, the Gepard has a main battery reload booster, and the French also have very hard-hitting torpedoes. So they do not, they don't have smoke screens. However, to make up for that, they get really fast engine boosts here, and their base speed's pretty good too, so they're very fast, they can move around the map pretty quick, they've got decent guns, and they've got very, very, very hard-hitting torpedoes. So, yeah, the French are kind of like speedy Gonzales sort of destroyers, especially once you get to the Mogador, once you get to the Life and Task. They've got decent guns, decent torps, um, and they're very fast. They can move around the map very quick, especially when you unlock the, Col uh, the Kleber, which is a legendary French destroyer. I'm not a big fan of the French, but they are pretty decent. They're pretty decent gunboats. The guns hit hard. They got hard hitting torpedoes and they're fast. Moving on to the Russians. Now the Russians are more of at least the top line here. They're not torpedo boats. They are primarily along the lines of long range gunfighting, at least in my experience anyway. I find it that the, the Russian destroyers are best at long range gunfighting with other destroyers medium to long ranges and the reason being is because the russian destroyers have access to um the russian destroyers have access to um the flatter firing trajectories and their higher velocity shells they travel through the air quicker and that also makes it to where the shells are flatter so these are more of longer range sort of gunfighting however the bottom line here, once you get to the Kiev, the Udaloy, the, the uh, whatever the th whatever this thing is called, these are kind of like the torpedo sort of Russian destroyers, but they still can gunfight. So, I don't know. The, the Russian destroyers are pretty weird, but in my experience, they're pretty good at, you know, long-range gunfighting, um, and that is about it. Um, they do have pretty decent torpedoes if you can actually manage to hit some of them. Once you get to the higher tiers, you do get some pretty decent range on them, but... Other than that, I can't really think of anything else to say about the Russians. Moving on to the Italian destroyers. I don't have a whole lot of experience with these things, um, but as far as I can tell, they are sort of the uh, YOLO torpedo boats in the game. However, keep in mind, too, that they do have SAP main batteries. That's right, they get semi-armor-piercing main batteries. They get access to rolling smoke screens, okay, which means basically you can pop a smoke screen and the smoke screen keeps up with you. And these destroyers also get access to short duration um, engine boosts. However, since they're short duration, they give you a lot more speed. So basically the Italian destroyers are kind of YOLO boats. However, you still can utilize them as gunboats and, of course, torpedo boats. So... They're a little weird. They uh, kind of seems like they uh, require a little bit of different sort of play style, but they're interesting. I hope to get more of these next update once they come out of early access. Moving on to the Pan-European Destroyers. The Pan-European Destroyers, I don't have a whole lot of experience with these things, but as far as I can tell, they are sort of the medium to long-range gunfighters. They've got decent torpedoes. They're very fast torpedoes. However, they don't hit very hard. So that's kind of the downside um, is the torpedoes, they don't hit super hard, but they're very, very, very fast. So you can dish out a lot of torpedoes. They've got quick reload. They're very fast. And um, what these destroyers, I find, are very good at is getting those floods. And then when they DC those floods, you can immediately get a follow-up flood or even a fire. 
And also, once you get to the higher tiers, these destroyers get access to pretty damn good AA. The, um, the pan-European destroyers have very good AA, especially at the higher tiers. So, once again, I don't have a whole lot of experience with these, but as far as I can tell, and, and as far as I've seen and witnessed, these things are very good at longer to medium-range gunfights. They got very decent torpedoes, they're very quick torpedoes, they're very good at getting floods, and they've got good reload, rapid-firing torps. They're pretty interesting, to say the least. And, last but not least, we've got the Pan-Asian Destroyers. These right here are radar destroyers. That's right. These destroyers get access to radar, at least at tier 6, 7, and tier 8. You start getting radar at this tier. Now, you can swap them out for smoke screens. However, I would recommend keeping radar because that's kind of their gimmick, okay? So, basically, what these things are good at is medium to short range gunfighting with other destroyers. They've got radar, they've got um, they've got deep water torpedoes. That's right. These destroyers get access to deep water torpedoes, which are very good at hitting cruisers and battleships. Okay. Keep in mind, guys, keep in mind, I see a lot of people going out there and trying to torpedo destroyers with these deep water torpedoes. Remember, these are deep water torpedoes. They cannot hit destroyers as it says there. Okay. So basically to summarize the pan Asians up, they are um, sort of the medium to close range gunfighters. They've got radar at tier six and up. Um, they've got basically um, they have um, deep water torpedoes, which are very good at smacking around cruisers and battleships. So they're pretty interesting. And also, I think uh, at the higher tiers, you get access to a torpedo reload booster, which is very helpful as well. But yeah, that's a little bit of an overview of the destroyers. We're gonna go ahead and play a match. Just to kind of show you guys what's up here, okay? So, I'm going to play a match in the Mayhem, and uh, I'm going to show you guys what I do in my Destroyers, and what you all should be doing as well, okay? Now, Destroyers, they have very good concealment, okay? That's something to keep in mind. Destroyers have very good concealment. Actually, before I go into a game... Oh, never mind, it's too late now. But I was going to show you guys the Commander build. I've got, um, I've got a full-on gunboat build. I'm running... Um, perceptive, which is basically a skill that allows you to see the closest ship. I'm going to point that out once I get into game here. But, nonetheless, before you even think about doing anything in your game, the first thing you want to do is click the left start button on your controller. I think it's the, uh, I don't know what the button is on PlayStation, but all I know is where you got to open this screen here, okay? And what you want to do is take a look at the enemy ships, especially if you're a destroyer, you want to see what the other destroyers are, okay? It looks like we're dealing with a Fubuki. We know the Fubuki is primarily a torp boat. The Avir is a gunboat, it's got SAP, and the Benham is a torpedo slash kind of like a gunboat destroyer. So we know this. Um, and it looks like, uh, we don't have any radars, okay? So one thing to keep in mind, too, uh, something to be very weary of is radar cruisers, okay? You do definitely want to keep an eye out for those. You want to try to avoid those at all costs, okay? Radar is what can definitely screw you up here. Now, notice that we spawned on the left side of the map. We are near Alpha, okay? Your number one job in a destroyer, okay? Your number one job in a destroyer is to get those capture zones, your second job is to spot, okay? You need to be providing reconnaissance for your team. Notice we are in a carrier game, so hopefully the carrier is going to be doing a lot more spotting in this game, so we won't necessarily have to. So, what we're going to do is we're going to push right into Alpha, and we are going to set up and hopefully counter, alright? We're going to hopefully counter some of the destroyers that come in here, okay? You really need to be thinking ahead in your destroyers. You need to have situational awareness, and you do not want to be YOLOing in, okay? You want to be positioning very well. you got to be careful, because destroyers do not have a lot of hit points, okay? You've got pretty damn good concealment, but you don't have very good hit points, so keep that in mind. Now, notice that Alpha is being capped, okay? It's currently being captured, so we're going to get in here and see what we can go ahead and do about that. All right, now we are contesting the cap. There is definitely another destroyer in this capture zone, and we are going to see what we can go ahead and do. Now, we need to watch out for torpedoes because, well, there probably are some incoming. You never know. So we're definitely going to be keeping an eye out for that. Now, I am spotted, so the destroyer is right here, and it looks like it is the enemy Fubuki. He is starting to open up with his 5-inch guns. We're okay. 
Notice the rapid reload on the American Destroyers. Looks like he is starting to sort of turn out here. So I'm trying to aim a little high to compensate for that. He is absolutely smacking me, but I am doing a lot more to him in return. My teammates are shooting at him. He's slowing down. He's smoking up. We're going to send some of our own short-range torpedoes that way and maybe catch him. Now, speaking of torpedoes, it looks like he sent some torpedoes, and uh, we should be okay to dodge those. The carrier actually did spot those torpedoes. So... That is a okay. Now, I'm hoping some of our torpedoes hit that destroyer. That would be freaking awesome if they do. They look pretty good. Notice where our twist and track is pointing. Those look about right. I'm hoping that these do hit something. And that they do. We managed to sink the Fabuki. Down he goes. That's our first blood award. There you go. You gotta love it. Now, that is one out of three destroyers down. We are going to be able to get this capture zone since we did manage to take out that destroyer. Now the Scharnhorst is coming in here. Looks like he's slowing down. The Arizona is coming over here. Now notice I'm not gonna shoot my guns. I just wanna keep these guys spotted for the team, okay? The team is kind of all cluttered up here. I don't really know what their positioning is, but I'm gonna do everything in my power to win this game, okay? Remember, getting capture zones is easily the most important thing to do as a destroyer okay because remember remember guys capture zones is what wins games okay getting those caps is super super important especially in domination mode now in capture the base mode it's a little bit different In capture the base mode what you want to primarily be doing is just positioning yourself to where you can defend the base um capture the base mode is kind of just whatever you want it to be now Charnorst is turning out here. We're about to get the capture zone in one second. Boom, bada, freaking bing. Now, notice the enemy team has two, or they have one cap, and they've got another cap that is currently being contested. And they are about to flip Charlie, and there they do. Okay. So that's unfortunate. The enemy team does have two out of three caps. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, if we take a look at the uh, leaderboard here, we just lost one destroyer. But we have sank two out of their three destroyers in return, and they've also lost a light cruiser, okay? Or sorry, a heavy cruiser. So that's pretty important to keep in mind. Now, one thing to keep in mind, too. Look in the bottom left and look at the destroying enemies and losing allies thing, okay? See the little ship icons there in the bottom left? Those tell you how many points you lose or gain for killing ships slash um, losing ships, okay? So if you sink a battleship, you get 45 points. If you sink... Or sorry, if you sink a battleship, you get 40. If you sink a carrier, you get 45. If you sink a destroyer, you get 30 points. And if you sink a cruiser, you get 35 points, okay? So that is something to keep in mind. You do want to be paying attention to that um, and really keeping an eye out for sure. Now, it looks like the Arizona is coming our way, so we're going to see if we can go ahead and set up some torpedoes on him. Now, notice that our team is just not doing too good right now in terms of capture zones. So we need to really get out here and hopefully get this cap. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is pop our engine boost, and we are going to hightail it towards Bravo. We need to get caps um, because after a while, man, we're going to start losing on points. So um, we do want to definitely get one of these caps. Now, I'm going to look back at my torpedoes, and the torpedoes look excellent. We actually hit that Arizona with three torpedoes the carrier is actually coming in so what we're going to go ahead and do is hold rb and we're going to click a to turn off our aa look in the right at the screen there we're turning off our aa because i don't want that carrier to get any bright ideas and potentially come and kill me now speaking of killing we actually did manage to uh hit that arizona with the second with the uh, second rack of torpedoes that's great now, I am plane spotted, so I'm just going to turn on my AA anyway because, well, I'm plane spotted. It's not like it really matters. Now, the Benham is almost dead, so what we're going to go ahead and do here is go ahead and finish him off. That is the Benham down, and that's all three destroyers down. That is absolutely huge. All three destroyers down is basically a guaranteed win unless the team throws. So, keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to go unspotted here, which is great. And we're going to be okay. Now, the New Orleans, when he hit me with one of his guns, he did knock out my engine. We're just going to go ahead and DC that. Damage con it. And we're going to send some torpedoes out towards that New Orleans. Remember, we've got six kilometer torpedoes on the Mayhem. So, that is something to definitely keep in mind. Now, we're going to pop a smoke screen. And as you guys can see, just look how long the smoke screen lasts. Look in the top left of the screen here where that little smoke icon is. 
Our smoke screen lasts for a minute and 48 seconds. Two minutes, basically. And our smoke screen um, basically uh, disperses for a very long time. So that is definitely really helpful. That's one thing I really like about the American Destroyers is the fact that their smoke screens just are the best in the game, man. It's really helpful if you're trying to set up in a cap and, uh, yeah, put smoke screens up because it gives you extra concealment. Now, we're about to get the second cap here. We're going to get Bravo. And uh, this is starting to look like a win. They've only got three ships left. Our team has done pretty good up to this point. We killed all of their destroyers. We've done our job. We've got the uh, caps. And uh, that's about it, guys. You really need to be thinking out ahead in destroyers, okay? you got to be keeping your head on a swivel. And you really need to be paying attention to um, what um, is going on in your games, okay? Paying attention to those points. Paying attention to what ships are alive and what ships are dead. And just really just having some level of situational awareness is key, okay, guys? It's very important. But nonetheless, we are coming up on the end of this video. I know, right? I know. 21 minutes. And uh, yeah, make sure you guys go down there if you have enjoyed this video to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, do all the stuff. I would greatly appreciate it. It does help out the channel. And uh, yeah, with all that being said, we're just going to keep on uh, doing our thing here and uh, we're going to let this match run its course. And um, yeah, that's about it. So Tennessee is still alive. So what we're going to go ahead and do is hopefully once he shoots off a salvo, we will start opening up with our five inch guns. Now, the Tennessee is currently, uh, yeah, he is getting bombed by the carrier. He did just fire a salvo. So we're going to start shooting our own guns here at that Tennessee. Now, he is not doing too good, um, and he's in a pretty bad position right now. He's going broadside to our team, and he is getting absolutely harassed by the carrier. So... Really, there's not a whole lot he can do about this situation here. We're just going to keep on farming him over and over and over again. Notice that since we've got smaller guns, we're aiming high into his superstructure here. And uh, that is where a lot of the uh, less armored parts of his ship is. We're going to be able to get a lot of damage there and even set some fires, as you guys can see. Which is pretty damn good. The damage is piling up. We are doing a lot to him right now. He's not having a fun time what's so freaking ever. I can tell you that right about now. But, yeah, we're just unloading on him right now. The team is also doing the same. And down he goes. That is our fourth kill of the game. 56,000 damage. Not a whole lot of damage. However, we are doing a lot in this game um, in terms of capping, in terms of spotting, in terms of just helping out our team. That is, at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, the most important thing. Doing what is required to win. Doing your job, okay? Spotting, okay? Getting those caps encountering other destroyers all right that's your most important three jobs there spotting capping those caps and helping um kill those destroyers if you can do all three of those things mainly the first two you're going to be doing pretty damn good okay not every game is going to be a game where you're going to win right you're obviously going to get countered here and there you might get screwed over by whatever but it's important to realize that you do have a lot of power to potentially change the outcome of a game, especially in a destroyer. Because you got to remember, destroyers have the lowest concealment. They've got very good, uh, very good detectability, obviously. They've got the best agility. They've got the best speed. They're able to get around the map very quick. And that is a perfect combination for uh, really just being a very vital role for your team. Um, you're going to be able to spot people. You're going to be able to get in those capture zones. And it's very important that you play like that. Really, guys, when you're playing your destroyers, just think, all right? Use your brain. I don't mean to be rude when I say that, but just use your brain and actually think. You know, have some level of situational awareness, and that will go a long way in your games. But anyhow, the last ship alive is their enemy ranger. We're one kill from a Kraken Unleashed medal. I would like to get out here and maybe get the kill, but unfortunately... I don't think it's going to happen. He's so far out that I'm not going to be able to get there in time, I don't think. But nonetheless, this is a pretty good game to show off. Not too bad. Um, not too bad at all. Leave a comment, guys. Tell me what you guys thought of this one. Um, have you guys learned anything from this video? Uh, let me know. Seriously, if I, if I have I missed anything, let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm always looking forward to hearing back from you guys and uh, whatnot. But nonetheless, everybody... 
that's going to go ahead and do it for uh, Destroyers in 2023. A little bit of a guide for you guys. A little bit of tips and tricks. This is how I play my Destroyers. Notice we only had 56,000 damage. We only had 56k, but we placed top of the leaderboard with 2.8k base XP. Not too shabby. Not to mention we were in a tier 6 lobby. We made 218,000 credits with premium time. We earned 6,000 XP, 300 global XP. Not a bad game whatsoever. And uh, yeah, guys, that's Destroyers. You know, like I said, remember, guys, do your job. Get those caps. Help spot the enemy ships. And just be a team player, y'all. Use your brains. Y'all got them. Y'all can definitely put those out there and really help your team carry those games to absolute victories. Remember, not every game is going to be a victory, but you can still have a lot of control um, in terms of what your ship does and what you do in-game and your battle contribution and whatnot. So, nonetheless, y'all, enough jibber-jabbering. That's going to go and do it for this one. I hope y'all did enjoy it. Like, comment, subscribe, all the jazz. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace out. Stay healthy, as always.